Greetings, fellow scribes. Welcome back to the archive. This week, I conclude my series on the great clans of Legend of the Five Rings by talking about the last clan to be founded. The clan that's founder, in fact, was the last son of a Ahante. This week, I talk about the Spider Clan. Like the Mantis, the Spider are driven by the ambition, pride, and power of one man. And the actions of Daigatsu shape both the origins and the very nature of the Spider. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as we talk about the Spider Clan. Every great clan is defined by its origin, by the founder. You know, the Crane are defined by the culture of Lady Doji. The Crab are defined by the sheer determination of the Kamihida. But what determines the origins of the spider? After all, the spider were not founded by a kami. They were founded by a seemingly mortal man. Well, this comes into the origins of Daigatsu himself. You see... Just before the death of Hante the 38th, his eldest son, Satori, and his pregnant wife were kidnapped. And his wife gave birth while in the hands of the kidnappers. The kidnappers were members of the Bloodspeaker cult. They were essentially people who used blood magic with a goal to one day bring back their master, Yuchiban. And they did some experiments. And they ended up binding the soul of an Oni to Daigatsu. But they also found out a way to translate themselves into Jigoku, into the realm of evil for a time. Because there was a prophecy that when the last Hante Emperor sat on the throne of the Empire, that would bring about the return of Fulang. And eventually, the Empress and the eldest son, Satori, were rescued. Satori would become after the death of Hante the 38th, would become Hante the 39th. And at that point, Daigatsu and those who'd traveled with him into the Shadowlands, sorry, into Jigoku, would be brought back, be brought out, to start doing everything they were going to do. And a lot of stuff happens. You know, the Day of Thunder happens, etc., etc. But Daigatsu has grown up. He has learned the ways of the Shadowlands, learned, 
learned powerful Maho because of the demon bound inside him. And all this. And so he founds a city in the Shadowlands. It will be called the City of the Lost. And what this ha city does, this city is a place where all those samurai who had become tainted but still believed in Bushido, still believed in some form of honor, would gather. And eventually Daigatsu became the Lord of the Lost, dominating them, molding them to his will. And fast forward, you have an Asahina become the Jade Champion. Now the Asahina are are extremely pacifistic, but they're also a very compassionate family. And so this. Asahina Jade Champion started allowing Lost back into the Empire. You know, repentant Lost. And Daigatsu saw this and started sneaking in some of his own agents among these repenting Lost that were sneaking in. And these agents would do whatever was necessary to start spreading an ideal. They started bearing a icon of a spider. And this was the origins, the, the roots of where the spider clan identity would start forming. And what would happen is these agents would start looking around, finding instances where bandits were going to attack a village or something, and showing up just in time to stop it. Well, actually, they were hiring the bandits, so they knew exactly when the bandits were going to be coming, etc., etc. But this started planting seeds in the peasantry of Rokugan. That the spider, that those bearing the spider mon protected these villages. And again, things continue on. You know, it's that, you know we've got second day of thunder that's already passed. We've got all this going on. The spider building, building, and somewhere during this time, Daigatsu decides he is going to leave the city of the lost. He's found an area of the Shinomen Mori, the great forest throughout a huge chunk of Rokugan, that the Shadowlands have worked their way into. And so he moves his people there. And they set up a city in, inside the Shino and Mori. And again, he starts building there. Building the city. Eventually it gets found out and destroyed. But that's not important. What's important is that Daigatsu moves slowly, moves meticulously. Once he had the city, once he had a population of the lost there, he started putting feelers out, making alliances with different clans, individuals within different clans, finding those who were disillusioned 
who were distrustful of the celestial order or just jealous and recruiting them and eventually you come to the time just before the destroyer war now yes understand I am glossing over a lot there is a lot that goes on during this including the fall of Otsun Uchi as the imperial city because well Daigatsu released the Uchiban and then Daigatsu had to help get Uchiban killed again Uchiban's just like a bad rash he never goes away But, so that, that's all big stuff that happened, but it doesn't really go towards the formation of the spider. Just before the Destroyer War, Daigatsu found out about a group coming from the south. He didn't know the specifics. He just knew that there was some sort of prophecy among a group from the Burning Sands area that something was coming and that it would turn the Shadowlands into its minions. And so Daigatsu started prepping. Because when this happened, he wanted to take advantage of it. And... Then you have the Destroyer War. And throughout the Destroyer War, the Spider end up consistently helping Rokugan. Now, this is because Daigatsu's wife, Shahai, had delivered him a son. And he wanted that son to inherit Rokugan. Because Daigatsu knew he was a Hante, that he was from the old Imperial line. And he made a deal with the Empress. The Empress asked for him to meet at a very specific point in time. He met there and the Empress's offer for him was that his son would be trained into the Imperial household as befits a scion of the Hante line. Though, yeah. uh, then the spider would be recognized as a minor clan. Not the great clan that Daigatsu wanted, but they would allow it to be openly exist. And Daigatsu just had to kill himself. So Daigatsu accepted this. And he killed himself at just the right moment. Because you see, Fu Ling was engaging Kali Ma at this time and losing. Actually, he did lose. But that was because Shahai finished a ritual that siphoned all of Fu Ling's power into Daigatsu. As soon as Daigatsu's soul hit Jigoku. And then Daigatsu turned around and started siphoning off all the power from Fu Lang and then all the power from Kalima, thus making himself the Lord 
of Jigoku. Not Jigoku's champion, like Fu Lang and Kalima were. Because at this point, he had all the power of a kami and a goddess. And plus all the power he had accumulated himself. And this let him assert his will over the realm of evil. Instead of being a servant of the realm's will. And at this point, as a full-fledged kami, he makes a counter-offer to the empress. The offer is simple. The spider will be recognized as a great clan. And he will withhold the taint from anyone except those who willingly accept it. And the Empress accepted this bargain. This put the spider into a unique position as the Empire's testers. Testing those who are loyal samurai or not by manipulating them. See who succumbs to their manipulations. And they do this all because of their variation on philosophy. See, the spider don't follow Bushido as a whole. Instead, they follow a philosophy called Shurido, the way of victory. Shurido is a variant code of honor. While it is not incompatible with Bushido, it takes a special sort of Bushi to be able to work both Shurido and Bushido into one cohesive whole. And this is because Bushido is about the obligation to the society, while Shurido is about personal empowerment. Like Bushido, there are seven tenets to Shurido. And you can, in many cases, see a one of the original seven great clans that gets connected to one of these. So, let's go ahead and talk about these. Control. This is the first tenant. It allows one to manipulate circumstances so that there is only one outcome. This tends to be a very scorpion one. Determination is to see a thing through to its conclusion. This, this tends to be a more unicorn trait. Just look at their whole determination to explore and eventually return to Rokugan. Insight is seeing the tr is to see the truth behind the facts. Insight of course leading to foresight. Dragon tend to succumb to this one the most. Knowledge is the core of thinking, knowing the facts of a situation. The old information is ammunition, or knowledge is the prelude to power. And 
this tends to be the weakness of the Phoenix. You know, you want to tempt Phoenix, tempt them with knowledge. Perfection. The goal to do everything exactly right. This tends to be the weakness of the crane. The element of Shurido that can cause a crane to fall because every crane lives for that perfect gift, that perfect strike, that perfect painting. And perfection is not just about perfecting something else, it's also perfecting yourself. Perfecting your beauty, perfecting your grace, perfecting your style. Constantly honing yourself. Strength. Acting upon the knowledge you've gained. Using your insight and control to focus and do what you want to do. This, according to the spider, is the core tenet, the ultimate goal of everything. Because this is what brings victory, this strength. And this is the weakness, the temptation for the lion. For the lion values strength victory above all else and then finally there's the driving force with Shurido the thing that allows one to use all the other elements will a indomitable will that one will take the actions one must no matter what the cost will ironically is the temptation for the crab because they will do just about anything to protect the wall and that takes this raw will and by using these seven tenants the spider are able to find the weaknesses of individuals in other clans pull them in make them work for them make these other samurai allies whether they know it or not but at the same time these build upon each other as a way to gain victory you use your will to to guide yourself, to force yourself to take the actions. Your knowledge lets you find the facts. Insight lets you see how everything connects. Your determination makes you go through the entire process, no matter what it is, as you assert your control over the situation finally achieving through your strength and your victory personal perfection and that is how a spider 
works and thinks. They might not always emphasize all these elements. They might not always put them all in a cohesive whole because just like with Bushido, Shorido lends itself to someone fixating or espousing more emphasis onto one tenant over others. But they still always work towards the same ultimate goal, perfecting themselves through victory. And that is the Spider Clan. Next week, I will be doing a Tales from the Archive. And then I will begin my next series. I have not decided what my next in depth series is yet, but you will certainly know. Until next video. I just want you all to remember to have fun and keep gaming.